Spacetime DB looks like it might force us to reevaluate the role databases play in our applications and how we integrate with them. It's created by a company called Clockwork Labs that has some pretty serious investor backing. So this isn't some afterthought side project. And investors include some big names like Roblox and Unity. It's not even the company's primary focus either. They're actually using it to build a game called Bitcraft, which is a massively multiplayer online RPG. And the company claims that Spacetime DB is a huge factor in being able to iterate quickly on the game. They even have an entire tutorial dedicated specifically to integrating the DB into a game built using the Unity framework. So it seems like game developers might actually be first class citizens in its ecosystem, but it's clearly capable of being used for other applications too. So is Spacetime DB a singularity that is going to permanently distort how we see databases? And are we crossing over an event horizon from which there is no return? Are our data accretion disks going to be forever changed? Oh, and did I mention that the logo is a black hole? Anyway, it's built in Rust, and Rust is a first-class citizen in terms of the getting started tutorials and also for language support. It is released under the Business Source License 1.1, which kind of means open source, just with the caveat that the authors are the only ones who can make money off of derivative works for the first few years. The main premise of Spacetime DB is that instead of having your application backend running on its own servers and connecting to a database running on a different set of servers, you actually write your backend logic and publish it as a module that gets run inside the database server. Right off the bat, some folks are inevitably going to have a visceral reaction to that idea, but maybe take a page from Morpheus's playbook. The Spacetime DB tutorials are actually pretty good. They walk you through building the scaffolding of a rudimentary chat app. Let's take a quick look at the highlights. You actually define your database table schema directly in your backend code using constructs native to the backend and language that you're working with. In Rust, your table schema is defined directly with simple Rust structs annotated with special macros. Each struct field basically represents a database column. SpacetimeDB has a special type called identity that can be used to associate records with a specific user. Every identity has a private token associated with it, which is what clients will use to authenticate with the backend. Then you can write what are called reducer functions, which are just regular Rust functions annotated with the spacetime reducer macro. You can think of reducers as being APIs that can be invoked by the client. These functions have a parameter called reducer context, which contains the identity of the client making the request, which makes it convenient to use that identity to retrieve only the database records associated with the user making the request. You are able to freely self-host a SpacetimeDB DB instance. If you're on Mac OS, it's available via Homebrew. To start a local instance, you can just run SpaceTime start. When you're ready to publish your server-side logic to the local instance, you can just run SpaceTime publish, specify a module name, and your logic gets compiled to WebAssembly and published to the server. Before you even start writing the client-side code, you can try manually invoking your reducer functions on the command line using spacetime call. When you're ready to write your client-side code, you can use spacetime generate to generate bindings based on the server-side code that you can reference in your client-side code. In the client-side code, you can directly invoke reducer functions just like the one we tested on the command line. You can also subscribe to changes that happen in the database tables by registering a callback function that gets invoked every time there are changes to those tables. That can be pretty powerful for some use cases. There is an upcoming cloud-based offering called SpacetimeDB Cloud, which aims to offer auto-scaling. This might be something to keep an eye on, especially if the pricing turns out to be competitive. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with SpacetimeDB. I do have some thoughts around user identities. The framework does offer authentication between the client and the database as you might expect, but it doesn't seem to offer a formal user signup or account management process for your application. Right now, it seems like it's completely up to the application developer to implement these things. For example, if users are using a username and password to log into your application or logging in using an OAuth provider like Google, you need to come up with some mechanism for mapping their sessions to the corresponding identity associated with their user in the Spacetime DB. In the tutorial project, Spacetime DB credentials are actually just automatically generated the first time a user connects. Then they're written to disk so they can be used the next time the client connects. I'm honestly not sure if end-to-end -end signup and account management is a reasonable feature request, but it sure would take a ton of the burden off the shoulders of application developers. That's a quick overview of Spacetime DB. Again, it provides a pretty interesting new perspective on how one might build applications and how your business logic interacts with the database. Let me know in the comments what you think of Spacetime DB. If you are interested in bleeding edge database technology, definitely check out this other video I made on another Rust powered database called SurrealDB that there's been a lot of buzz around lately. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.